When it comes to discussing modern day John Frusciante tones, you know, the unlimited love era, there is one concept that, in my opinion, is the most important addition in regards to his sound. It's a topic we've discussed on the channel before, but not quite as in depth as what today's video is going to be. And this all has to do with the Boss SD1 being added to John's pedal board. This is a overdrive pedal that provides John with just a lot more flexibility than he ever had before and a lot more tonal variety compared to his pedal boards during past stints with the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And in this video today, I'm going to give you guys a few different examples of John Frusciante using the Boss SD-1 Live and showcasing just how important this new sound is to his tone in the present day, you know, 2022, 2023. And we're just gonna discuss the different various uses of this pedal for older songs as well and how he's just changing up the feel of certain songs, but this overdrive edition is really making a big impact on these older songs as well. Let's get right on into today's video. Now, as we move on to our first example here of the Boss SD-1 being used by John Frusciante, let's first kind of re-go over why the SD-1 is actually so important because this will just make understanding the kind of concept we're discussing here in the context of John Frusciante's sound. It'll just make it easier for you guys and you get the most out of this video and the discussion that's going to follow. So the Boss SD-1 sits sonically between the MXR microamp and the Boss DS2 in terms of John's rig. During past years with the Chili Peppers like the Stadium Arcadium era, John really had two options in terms of drive for his sound. He had the microamp, which could add a little bit of a boost, not really adding a lot of gain at all. It's nothing that I'd call overdrive, that's for sure. Or he could go on to full-on distortion with the Boss DS2. Now, because the Boss SD-1 sits sonically between those two pedals, he has a completely different world to explore in terms of just a nice overdrive. Now, think of, again, the solo of Californication with the MXR microamp. You add that on to our first example of Black Summer, the chorus specifically, it's too light. You're not getting nowhere near enough push with the amps in your sound. You're not getting enough overdrive to make it kind of sound what you'd be going for with Black Summer. Now, talking about the Boss DS2, you try that for the chorus of Black Summer, and it's just too much. And Kentaro, who, if you're a fan of John Frusciante's gear, there's no way you haven't heard of Kentaro. He's just one of the best, if not the best kind of John Frusciante gear expert. And he posted a video that I was looking at the other day where kind of back when Black Summer came out, he tried doing it with the Boss DS2. And I'm just using this as an example of what the Boss DS2 would sound like for the course of Black Summer. And as you guys are gonna hear, it's just too much distortion. It's too heavy and doesn't sound quite right. And I'm certain you guys have checked out Kentaro's stuff, but if you haven't, it'll all be linked in the description down below. But the Boss SD-1 is just perfect for the chorus of Black Summer. John Frusciante throws that on and bam, you have the perfect level of overdrive and it sounds fantastic. Using anything else on his board would be either too much or too little. Black Summer also provides just the perfect example of another key concept here with the Boss SD-1. Now, traditionally, John Frusciante's lead tone would be the Boss DS-2 stacked with a fuzz pedal. For that searing lead sound, those are the two pedals that he'd use together in combination. Now, however, with the Boss SD-1, stacking that with a different fuzz pedal, you just unlocked a new tonal combination because you're just using a way less driven pedal. You know, the distortion level with the SD-1 compared to the DS-2, you just can't compare it. Now, when you stack the SD-1 with the fuzz pedal, it's just a completely different sound and level of gain. Now, when you think of the Black Summer solo, that's exactly what is happening. John Frusciante is using the Boss SD-1 in combination with the MXR Variac Fuzz to get that sound, and it's fantastic.
Our second example here of the boss SD1 is going to be it's only natural. Now, I want to specifically focus right now on the first solo. Now, what John Frusciante was doing live for the very first solo of the song, number one, was just being magical with his right hand and doing that kind of echoing pattern throughout the entire song. But what he was doing is stacking the Boss SD-1 with the MXR microamp for the solo tone for the very first solo, and it's just, it's amazing. Now I know in that footage, it looks like he might have stepped on the big muff and turning that pedal off instead of the microamp, but two things. You slow it down and get to the right frame, you see that his foot actually doesn't touch the switch of the uh, big muff. But also, if he was stacking the big muff with the Boss SD-1, you would just expect to hear just a way bigger sound instead of just kind of a beautiful overdrive that you just heard there. So that combination is both of those pedals together, and again, it kind of opens up a new solo tone that John never had access before just by virtue of the pedals he had chosen to use in the past. And it's probably the biggest thing I'm looking forward to with another album hopefully coming out here sooner than later is more of this crazy, just perfect overdrive sound. You know, I'm very much used to John having just a very heavy kind of all out there solo tone with, you know, the DS2 and a fuzz or just the big muff going on for a solo. But now this is just a new level of tone for John and I just love it so much. It's it's brilliant. John, the last chance you ever watch this video, which is like a 0% chance, but I just, you thank you for adding this in because that solo was just, it was a beautiful tone. It was fantastic. So this is another example of how the Boss SD-1 just creates this new sound that John can really experiment with and how its addition is just, in my opinion, so key to his new sound during the limited love era. It's just super important to understand. Now we're gonna move on to our third example here and it's the song Don't Forget Me. And remember earlier on in the video, I discussed how we're gonna look at older songs that now are being transformed with this pedal. And this is actually something I touched on before when I first discovered John doing this, but we're gonna rediscuss it here in this video because it's still valid and part of the discussion. Now, during Don't Forget Me solo, John Frusciante uses the Ibanez WH-10 version three modded by Wilson FX in this era, at least, but he also uses the Boss SD-1 in order to stack with the wah pedal to create that solo sound, and it's a different sound than what we got in the past with Don't Forget Me. Now, I'm gonna play the more modern version of the solo for you guys, and then I'll play one of the past versions of the solo from the By The Way or the Stadium Arcadium era. Now, personally, I think both versions of Don't Forget Me sound great, and leave a comment down below as to which version you guys prefer, but this is just one example of how the Boss SD-1 is kind of transforming an older song, and John's kind of sound and approach is changing with the addition of Overdrive, 
rather than using full-on distortion. And as you guys could hear in those two different examples, the first kind of one with the Adam to Love era sounded completely different compared to the one from Stadium Arcadium. And it's just really cool to see kind of John evolve these songs and kind of grow with them and change things. And now instead you get a bit more of a more mellow solo there instead of just having a very heavy, aggressive solo kind of right away, at least with the song. I do think it is really interesting though how John decided with Don't Forget Me to go with a more kind of overdriven first solo. And then near the end, as the song builds, he does stick with, you know, the more distorted kind of classic John Frusciante lead sound, especially when he plays the melody. But in this new version of it, they kind of get an easier, kind of more mellow solo. And then you still get the epic kind of ending that is with Don't Forget Me before the song ends. But just a really cool example of John, again, just changing an older song and kind of adding in this new overdriven sound that's part of his core tone, at least I think. Our next example here is on What You Thinking, my favorite Red Hot Chili Pepper song that's released out of both albums. I just am crazy about this song. I think it's brilliant. And unfortunately, I cannot provide you guys with actual footage of John stepping directly on the Boss SD1 during the song where you can easily see his foot right on that yellow box engaging it. But we know what the Boss SD1 sounds like in the context of his rig, and it's very easy also to identify what the microamp sounds like on its own and what the DS2 sounds like on its own, and a fuzz goes without saying. So when you see John step on one single pedal for the course of what you're thinking, it can only be the Boss SD1. <laughs> Now there is one point I'll make here to the footage you guys just saw for what you're thinking that kind of helps to prove that this is the Boss SD1. When you watch that footage, John steps on a pedal and then puts his left foot just back from where he stepped. Then as the chorus goes on, the main camera with the big screen, you actually see John's foot is directly kind of in front of the Boss SD1. So just based on where he stepped on the board and then just put his foot back, he's right in front of the boss SD1 and then to turn it off again all he'd need to do is just forward a little bit and turn it off but as you guys can see here the chorus sound is the boss SD1 and my favorite Red Hot Chili Pepper song from the new stuff at least probably top 10 at least all time I'd have to make a list on that but it's up there for sure personally I just love what you with those different examples I've showcased for you guys in this video I think it's very clear just how key now at this point overdrive is to John Frusciante's overall sound. Before it was just a tone that was just not possible, it just was literally not possible with his rig in the past. But now there's just a whole new sonic landscape John can discover in terms of overdrive in these solos and I think it's just really incredible to see that not maturing in his sound but just the evolution of his tone I guess over the years. It would have been really easy for him to just stick to entirely the same basics and kind of principles that he had in the past with the band and just revisit them. But instead what John's done is he's added just a whole new level of possibility in terms of his sound with Overdrive on its own with the Boss SD1 or stacking that with different pedals in order to get different sounds as well. Like with the microamp for a solo to boost the SD1 or to combine that with a fuzz pedal instead, there are just so many new combinations that John can do now in terms of tone. I wonder what that would sound like if he did the SD1 into the DS2 and just did a heavier distortion sound instead of just DS2 and microamp because he's going to be pushing the DS2 more now with the SD1. That's the way signal chain goes. It's kind of impossible to tell at this point. But there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed this video and just was really cool to look at. Again, just what I think is such a crucial part of John's sound in the limited love era and something that I don't think is being discussed nowhere nearly as much as it should be. And if you're a John Frusciante fan and you had to get one pedal from the limited love return of the dream canteen era, I do genuinely think it would be the boss SD one would be the one worth adding because 
you can perform all these different songs, jam out to them, and just explore overdrive like John Frusciante has done. So you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you stuck with me all the way to the end, these videos I've been putting out lately have been pretty long, but I hope they've been valuable, entertaining, and just, you know, and just overall enjoyable for you guys. And if so, please give the video a thumbs up. It just helps the algorithm, helps push my channel, and kind of lets me know also I'm doing a good job with the videos I'm putting out. Please hit subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And again, you're not going to see my videos any more in the feed than you just will from watching a couple of them anyway. So the subscription just gives me a boost and helps to let me know, again, I'm doing a great job with the content and you guys are all liking it. But thank you so much for the support. If there's anything more with these kind of style of videos I've been putting out lately you guys want to see, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys again so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.